A hunter's snowmobile dies 50 miles from camp. Temperature, minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind screaming across empty tundra. No trees, no caves, no stone. He has a bone knife and two hours before dark. He starts cutting blocks from the snow trying to kill him. NASA engineers now use this same technique to design shelters on Mars. At minus 84 degrees Fahrenheit, exposed skin freezes in under a minute. The Arctic tundra offers nothing but snow and wind, yet Inuit families raised children here. They cooked meals, they slept warm. Their shelter was carved from winter itself. Snow became their armor. Each block held thousands of tiny air pockets. Nature's insulation, slowing the escape of warmth through the walls. Pack enough snow together and you've built a wall that blocks the cold from penetrating inward. A dome constructed from wind-hardened snow blocks could trap body heat inside. A single seal oil lamp, combined with warmth from two or three people, raised interior temperatures by 72 degrees warmer than outside air. When the tundra dropped to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the inside hovered near freezing, cold enough to see your breath, but survivable. Wind couldn't penetrate the walls then something happened each night. Interior warmth melted the inner dome surface slightly. By morning, that moisture refroze into a thin ice glaze, natural cement that sealed gaps and strengthened the structure. Each night made the igloo more windproof. Time improved it. Understanding snow's properties meant nothing without architecture that could withstand arctic storms. Using bone knives, hunters cut blocks from wind-packed snow. They arranged these blocks in a rising spiral, each one leaning inward at a calculated angle. The dome supported itself without frames or posts. When built correctly, a person could stand on the roof. The curved shape distributed weight evenly and minimized surface area, reducing the boundary where heat could escape. A seasoned hunter could raise a family-sized igloo in under two hours, critical when blizzards arrived without warning. He'd listen for the snow's voice. A dull thud meant strength. A sharp crack meant danger. They rejected that snow and searched for better material. A single block cut at the wrong angle could trigger cascade failure. In 1922, explorer Vilyalmur Stefansson documented a family of seven surviving three weeks in a single igloo during a hunting trip. While polar bears prowled outside in minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit darkness, children inside played games by lamplight. The structure held. Even perfect walls failed if the wind found a way in. 
The Inuit designed tunnels dug below floor level. Cold air is denser than warm air. It sinks and stays trapped in these passages. Families crawled through and climbed up into the living chamber, leaving winter in the tunnel below. Got you. Up you come. So winter warm. stays down there. A sealskin door flap and semicircular windbreak wall outside added extra defense. Inside, they built raised sleeping platforms from packed snow, covered with willow branches and caribou firs. Sleepers rested where the warmest air accumulated, since heat rises. But ventilation presented a deadly trade-off. Too little airflow and carbon dioxide accumulated during sleep. Too much and hypothermia crept in. Fresh air entered through microscopic gaps in the snow blocks. Stale air exited through the top. The igloo became a self-regulating system where oxygen flowed and trapped, warmth stayed sealed. This wasn't just engineering. It was cultural knowledge transferred across generations. In the glow of seal oil lamps, children watched elders cut and position blocks, absorbing technique and philosophy. Construction required patience and cooperation. Rushed work caused the collapse. Even as modern housing spread across the Arctic, Inuit communities preserved this knowledge as identity. Nunavut's 2008 Education Act brought elders into classrooms to teach igloo construction. Like a puzzle piece? Exactly. See, listen, hear how it cuts clean? Communities hold building competitions. Families pass down these skills because a snowmobile can break down in the wilderness, and this knowledge saves lives. That Arctic wisdom now extends beyond Earth. When NASA held its 2015 3 deprinted Habitat Challenge for Mars shelters, the winning design was an ice dome, a space igloo using Martian water ice. Engineers realized that principles invented by Arctic hunters could protect astronauts on alien worlds. Modern polar research stations quietly borrow the igloo's ventilation logic, proving its design still guides life on the ice. The Inuit didn't conquer their environment, they studied it. Desert dwellers built thick mud brick walls to withstand the heat. Islanders wove palm fronds to shed rain. In every climate, humans ask not how to escape their world, but how to live within it. The greatest innovations emerge not from those with the most resources, but from those who must understand their environment most completely to survive. That hunter with the dead snowmobile? He's cutting the final block now. By nightfall, he'll be asleep in warmth while the wind screams outside. Tomorrow, he walks home. The igloo glowing against the Arctic night isn't just lamplight on snow. 
its human intelligence burning bright against the void.